Okay. All right. We want to welcome you to the Global Watch International. This is our Jerusalem time, 6 a.m. And this is our watch that's for the USA. And we have this evening a special guest and I'm going to let Eileen Damien. So I just wanna speak a blessing over all of you, all of this time now that the Holy Spirit would just penetrate, reveal his will, prompt us with the needs that need to be prayed over and interceded over. And we just pray the blessing of the Lord on each one of you in Jesus name. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Amy. We've received that blessing. Um, and welcome, everyone. I see we've got some from um, the Europe area. And so I think what we would normally say is good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're grateful that you're here. Um, so I'm Eileen, and I'm the Pacific Time Zone Coordinator with the USA Watch. And um, I've invited someone that I'm going to call a personal friend, but an amazing man of God, um, to join us this evening. And um, it's, so it's George Crabb. And um, he's been on the watch with us one other time, I think a year or so ago. And I asked him if he would pick a worship song. So Amy's going to play the worship song. And then George is going to fill us in a little bit about what he's been doing, how he's been doing the Lord's work and his calling. So um, Amy, when you're ready. Thanks, Amy. So a couple of things you might have noticed that's an oldie but a goodie. And I don't know if any of you might have seen the movie, um, The Jesus Revolution, came out of uh, Coast, uh, Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. So that's the church um, that that um, what movie was based out of. So thanks, George, for picking um, that song. It was it was great. But I'd like to um, introduce uh, you to, uh, um, to George Crabb. Um, He's uh, a friend and local within our community. He's the author of several internationally sold books, wrote to uh, Amemus as, uh, as well as some others. He's the founder of Word Northwest, a multi-band music event with internationally known speakers geared toward the next generation. He's also co-founder of the Pacific Northwest Christian Surfers. George grew up surfing the wild waves in Santa Cruz, California, and then served as an army ranger in the elite 75th Ranger Regiment. He lives in the beautiful North uh, Olympic Peninsula with his beautiful wife and two sons. And among other things, uh, Pacific Northwest, okay, we love our coffee and George is no exception. Um, uh, he can be seen often either um, coffee with friends, surfing, riding, or fishing. Recently, George has fostered an outreach to those in Israel, and um, I just want to look forward expectantly to what George might have to share with us. Uh, his mom and I are weekly prayer partners, and uh, yeah, we've all been friends together in our small community, but it's amazing to me when I learned that George, like, is reaching out to Israel. So I said, you got to tell us what's going on. And also, we are going to be yeah. taking communion. So if you don't have your elements, if you could do that. Okay, George, take it away. Oh, thank you, Eileen. Yeah, that song uh, by Chuck Gerard. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Elisa Childers. She's a, a women's speaker and she's on YouTube like I am. And uh, that's her dad. And uh, she was a child of the Jesus Revolution parents, just like I was as well. And yeah, that that music, uh, I know it looks kind of 70s because it is, <laughs> but it was amazing. That time was, I remember as a little child, the Holy Spirit moving so, so powerfully. And you could just feel God in the air. It was amazing. But uh, hey, it's so good to be on here with you guys. And uh, yeah, so I have a YouTube channel. Um, this is what I've been, this is how the ministry to Israel has been, um, it's been going is through the YouTube channel because my channel's uh, all about how to find Jesus, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach in the, in the Old Testament or in the Tanakh. And um, so I, I just started a new series and, and I'm just doing it over and over and over, but it's going from Genesis all the way through the prophets and then the Psalms and the writings and, um, and just showing the Jewish people where he's at, where he's found in all of the Old Testament. And uh, the, latest, uh, the latest episode that I did was on Joseph, Moses, and Jesus and how we see a big picture of, of God's plan through Joseph and through Moses showing a, a type and a picture of Jesus because both of them 
had miraculous births. You know, uh, Rachel was, uh, she was barren and God opened up her womb and she was Israel's most favored uh, wife, right? A woman. And, and she birthed Joseph in her old age. And the same thing with Moses. He was, he was uh, put in the, the basket. You know, there were, there, there was this Herod like Pharaoh who was trying to kill all the Hebrew baby boys in the region. And so what did he do? He, uh, his mother, you know, put him in the basket, but Miriam, that's where we get the name Mary took care of him. And then we, so we see that there's a similarity there, but then they were both rejected the first time, right? They were rejected by their own. And then later what happens, they both have Gentile brides because Joseph had a, a when, when he was raised up out of that, that, uh, place of judgment, he was raised about it. He was before the throne. And he was the only one found worthy to reveal those dreams. And what happens to Pharaoh, he, he who sat on the throne gave him a Gentile bride. And he was all had to bow the knee to him except for he who sat on the throne. So it's a picture of Jesus. And then we see Moses, right? Moses, he was rejected by his own the first time. And then what happens? He, he rescues seven Gentile women at a well. How many churches are in Revelation? Seven. And he rescues them from the evil shepherds, and then he marries one. He has one Gentile bride, and he's shepherding the Gentile flock in the Gentile land. But God suddenly surprises him and says, I want you to go back to Egypt to rescue my people Israel and his people too. So he was a picture of Jesus too, and, and it's a picture of God's big plan, how he, he wants to – he's, he's going to have his Gentile bride – and then during a seven-year time of trouble, that time of trouble, what happened in Joseph's story, that famine was all over the whole face of the earth. His Gentile bride was with him. But who comes to him in fulfillment of his dreams? They come bow down to him, and he rescues them, and he forgives them, and he loves them. And he shows great chesed, which is that word in Hebrew for loving kindness and tender mercies. And he shows that to his brothers. And they, as they were fulfilling the, the God-given dreams that he had. And, and then what happens? They wept together. And what does that remind you of? Zechariah 12. They will look on him, on me, whom they pierce. And they will weep for him as one weeps for his firstborn, their firstborn child. So there's huge pictures of that. So these episodes in YouTube, they, they go out and... Israelis, you know, quite a few, and a lot of our religious Israelis who are against me, you know, they're against this. But if you engage them with debate and you respect them and you don't get angry and cut them off, they they actually will come back. I mean, they're gonna they're not gonna be for you. A lot of them still. I'm I mean, I like arguing with a lot of them, not arguing, but in a good way. You know, like debating about Jesus and they like the dialogue back and forth. And there's this one woman, uh, Paz Rechmin, and she's in Israel and she's very, really, she's a religious woman, very religious Jewish. And, and uh, her and I have a relationship where we go back and forth. You know, she totally disagrees with me, but we have this thing where we have the respect and we, and there's a lot of ministry. There's a kid named Nathan over there. Same thing, religious Jewish guy. And he loves me too. And it's because I can take their criticism because they get pre they're very smart people, by the way. I mean, it's like debating uh, Ben Shapiro, you know, he's, they're so smart, <laughs> but it's just been an incredible journey. And uh, it had even people pray to Jesus um, through the YouTube videos. So, you know, use whatever God has in front of you, because I think YouTube and not just YouTube, but all this social media stuff is it's like the Romans wrote at the time. Like Paul would be using the heck out of it. You know, I mean, Paul would be all over the every platform you can imagine. Uh, you know, ministering to the Jewish people, but also to the to the Gentile, to the whole world too. So yeah, it's been amazing, and um, I'm just having a great time doing it. I love it. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So if you guys have any questions about any of it, uh, feel free to ask. But but it's definitely, when you look at Joseph's story, especially, I mean, I wrote a book on it years ago. I remember Hans, remember at Calvary Chapel, Eileen, um, Hans had me teach uh, on Joseph, and I ended up writing the, the book on it. And, and it basically, it was just notes, and God helped me expand the notes out. 
But what struck me was that Joseph, he was so mistreated by his own and they hated him. They despised him and they wanted to murder him. They conspired to murder him as he was the father's most favored son. And then he was sent out of Hebron by his father. Well, Hebron means alliance or friendship or fellowship. So he was sent out of fellowship with his father to these brothers that he knew hated him and he went anyway. And he finds them in Dothan, and Dothan means laws and customs. And what were the religious leaders doing? They were all enamored in the laws and customs. They were obsessed with that. And that's how Jesus found them. And so and he, this is amazing. So the spies rejected him. They stripped him of his tunic. They threw him in the pit. And then Judah, this is where we get the name Judas. So it derives from the name Judah, comes up with a plan to sell him for 20 pieces of silver. That's a price of a slave. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver, also the price of a slave in his time. And so he was sent, they, they handed him over to the Gentiles, and then later he was falsely accused, and he was down in that place of the judgment. And Joseph tells those two with him, remember there was two guys, Baker and the cupbearer, and he tells them their fate. One of them, the, the cupbearer is restored to the king. To serve the king again, he lives. The other one was cursed like to the two on the cross with Jesus. And then he was raised up. Joseph was raised up out of that place of the condemned and was brought before the throne. And here's where it ties into Revelation. He was the only one found worthy to reveal those God-given dreams that Pharaoh would give to Pharaoh about the future. Jesus, in, Rome, in Revelation chapter 5, he's the only one found worthy to take the scrolls out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. And so we see this big picture of Jesus, but then he was given a Gentile bride. And then he was, there was this seven year time of great harvest. And when that last piece of grain was collected and brought into the storehouses, that to me pictures Romans chapter 11, where Paul says when that last Gentile is brought in or saved, right? Then all of Israel will be saved. And they're saved when? During that seven-year time of great trouble. And so a huge picture of Jesus in there. And it's just been a blessing. It's been so fun to uh, just to, to talk with a lot of these Israelis and debate with them. And some of them, you know, they hate me for it. And they, you know, they, <laughs> they write bad comments, whatever. That's fine. But a lot of them, there's this relationship that I get to build with them. And it's so amazing. Have any of you uh, seen videos So Be It by any chance? It's um, a ministry out of out of Israel, and I think it's tied in with uh, Jews Jews for Jesus. Nobody's yeah, seen I'm that one. Familiar with that? Yeah. Um, if you get a chance, check them out. It's it's uh, it's called So Be It on YouTube, and you'll see street evangelism in Israel by Christian Israelis. And it's amazing. It's so powerful. And uh, that's where a lot of the same people, they, they'll comment on that too. And then they comment on my channel. And uh, we have like, you know, discussions and debates. And, and I know there's times when it really affects them because there'll be times where there's these long pauses and, and they won't comment. When, I, you know, when you're able to share Psalm 22 with them or Isaiah 53, you know, and how how even the worm of Psalm 22 shows a picture of Jesus, this little worm where he says, I am a worm and no man. That little creature climbs up a tree one time in its life. It's called the Tola or the Tola Shani. And it's, and it's a little creature. It climbs up and it sticks itself to a tree one time to die. And it births, it gives life to its offspring. And it literally bursts open. And dyes that tree crimson red for three days and then turns as white as snow and falls to the ground like a snowflake. It's amazing. It's a picture of the cross. And there's just, there's so much of that in the Old Testament. It just blows my mind. And, and I love teaching it to my, my Jewish friends in Israel. So, yeah, super excited about this uh, ministry. And, and I could... Definitely, I appreciate your prayers. If you guys would, I know you're prayer warriors. If you would please pray for my ministry um, through primarily through YouTube, but all kinds of other platforms as well. And it's all about, for me, I had this, um, the day I was saved in 
when I was 13 years old and I gave my life to the Lord and I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, God just put this, this love in my heart for the Jewish people. It's a very special uh, love that God put there for, for them. And uh, I didn't even know they were still God's people. I was just, I asked my dad, I read the Bible about Israel a little bit in the Old Testament. He says, yeah, yeah, they're still God's people and he has a plan in the future. So yeah, it's real exciting. And I just love being on here with you guys. Thank you so much for inviting me, uh, Eileen, and, and the rest of you. Thank you. And thanks, George. Um, does anybody have any questions of George, um, if you want to just raise your hand? Um, but also, somebody did put in the chat. Um, so someone that's affiliated with the Global Watch that's in Israel, they do have a ministry, um, boots on the ground, out there um, on the streets um, in presenting you know jesus to them also so yeah there's a lot going on yeah that's so awesome yeah i think when israel became a nation there was like 20 something uh jewish followers of jesus and i can't remember what the number is now but i, I think it's in the thousands i mean it's growing exponentially and uh yeah i'm excited because the bible tells us right the bible says there's going to be a a great uh awakening and in, in romans chapter 11 it's going to be a just an amazing day when they finally see their long lost brother <laughs> right who's yeah. alive it's just like uh israel like jacob was like my son's alive and he was so excited and i think george, that's could, it's going to be the greatest george could you share a minute mm -hmm. about the surf ministry i know that there was one particular person that was unique um I'm, I'm sure there's lots, but I remember about the one man that was blind and that you guys took him out surfing. Maybe tell a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've seen some good fruit there. A lot of people uh, getting saved through that ministry. Um, there was one guy, uh, Miles um, Hustad, and him and I are like, we're best friends now. Um, but anyway, he was a depressed uh, young man who was he got some disease in his 20s where he just started going blind and even deaf too. He could barely hear with the, with the uh, hearing aids in. And God just brought him into my life. We, we started going to Bible. I'd pick him up at his home with either with his parents and we'd go to Bible study at Starbucks every Thursday night. And I got him to, you know, God just like opened it up for him. We went surfing together and we had a plan before we went out. He took his hearing aids out. He couldn't hear. He couldn't see hardly. And uh, and I was able to push him. My friends and I pushed him into waves. And eventually he started standing up and riding these little waves. And it was such a blessing. And the guy was just so stoked. And then he was slowly getting out of his depression. And, uh, and it was amazing to watch this. God did this. And later he, we're on our way home from Bible study on a cold winter, rainy day. He said, hey, George, you know, we had these good discussions, but he said, can you please pray that I would have a wife someday? I really want a wife. And it, I'm just scared because women see a disabled guy like me and and women just don't they don't want a guy like that. You know, they want a strong, healthy guy. And I said, Miles, there's a woman out there for you. God already knows her. Let's just start praying for her right now. <laughs> Let's pray for her. She's out there. So we started praying for her. Right. And it was like a week later, he meets her and she adores him. And they have this beautiful marriage. They've been married for like two years now. He wanted me to be his best man. I mean, God is so amazing. And uh, and they're uh, now that she's pregnant too. So they're, they're going to have a child. Oh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's so awesome. Yeah. God is so good, right? I mean, it's amazing how he he can use something like a surf ministry or, you know, a prayer. In any ministry we have, a YouTube ministry to reach people. So never put a limit on God. <laughs> he can do anything. So, Amen. yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Any questions? Or I see some in the chat about, um, I think Joe posted about uh, in South Africa, uh, a big Christian surfers organization. So yeah, God can use anything well across the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm excited. So we, South Africa. Yeah, there's a church down there, Urban Life Church. I think it's called. They, uh, I met a pastor down there, and he had me. Do, um, to, we did a live Sunday one time at his church on um, how Joseph is like Jesus. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was pretty amazing. So I think it's called Urban Life Church, and I forgot which city they're out of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's fun. I, I, I'm not against technology at all. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I think in Cape yep. Town, it's an Assembly of God uh, movement. Yeah, Urban Life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks, Joe. Sure. Deb, you have your hand up. <laughs> yes. Hi, um, George. Thank you for sharing. Um, that's awesome. I. It just. It sounds to me just that you're you're reasoning from the scriptures, like Paul. You know, like using using the word. <laughs> and and to ministering to the jewish people so um just really appreciate you being on and sharing um i and forgive me i got on a couple minutes late you might have said this or i missed it but are you primarily do you go back and forth to israel to minister to the jewish people there or are you are how are you finding if you're ministering in the u.s let's say to the jews in america um do you have is that do you do any of that and how do you find that um, to be? Uh, actually, everything has been through YouTube and other platforms like social media. Um, I do have some Jewish friends in America, but I've, but my primary um, outreach is through YouTube. And, um, and that's where I've met most of them online through that, through the comments. And, and then sometimes they want to they want to link in like Instagram and do private messaging there, which is fine. Uh -huh. You know, there's, there's a lot of things like that, but uh, yeah. So, so mostly I don't, I really don't have anything here in the U S um, which I would love to do that. If God opened that up, I would, oh, I'd love that. But uh, right now it's just been Israel and I don't go there. Um, I haven't even been to Israel yet, to be honest with you. Um, and I am going in 2024 with pastor Tim and Burnett. Uh, my pastor and and his wife and my wife and my my son my 13 year old so yeah we're gonna go and uh we're excited about it so i'm trying to right now i'm kind of researching and trying to connect with some people over there um i will be on a tour so it might be kind of difficult but i would i would sacrifice one of the tour legs to go you know mm -hmm. hang out with some of those people if if if, it, if god opened that door so yeah that's awesome. Well, yeah, and it sounds like the Lord's the Lord's been preparing you. I, you did mention the YouTube, so forgive me. I know you said that was sort of a primary outreach. Oh, but, yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, but yeah, I I just wondered, you know, the the difference between U.S. and and you know Jews and Israel. So um, I'm sure I'm sure that would be a challenge in some different ways. But thank you for sharing. You bet. Yeah, you're welcome. One of the Thanks, things I really touched. One of the things that really touches their heart is uh, I, I'll share sometimes I had a great uncle uh, when I was a little boy. Um, he used to come up to me all the time and he was from Canada. He didn't speak English. He spoke German or whatever, but he always showed me his arm and he had the number tattooed on his arm and he had the greatest, biggest smile of joy on his face. And he would show this to me all the time when I was a little kid. My mom told me later that he hid his Jewish friends in europe from the nazis and he had no toes either they made him walk barefoot in the snow and sent him to a concentration camp and so i'll share that with my israeli friends and it's kind of a it's like when you share that with them it doesn't all the other disagreements go away they just love me. you know they're like oh god bless your uncle and god bless you and you know it like changes everything and it is kind of a you know a little doorway or a bridge to to make friendships with them. So, yeah. Thanks, George. Um, Amy? Yeah, since you do uh, YouTube and stuff, then do you get a lot of traffic? And then from that, uh, be able to develop re relationships that you can pursue or that try to contact you then? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually starting out like as far as um, the ministry part, I've only been doing it for about a year, year and a half. Um, and there's times where in the past I would advertise some of the videos that were specifically the ones where there was types of Jesus like Joseph. And I'd advertise those in Israel and 
you know, pay a little bit, you know, money to get it out there. Uh, that wasn't too effective. It's, it, it's just better to, I found to comment with them, but, um, you know, it, it's a growing ministry. It's not huge, but, you know, I just feel like it's my calling and I think the Lord's growing it real kind of organically and, and slowly, to be honest with you. I think that's what's happening. Did I don't that answer know if you're your familiar. Or... Yeah, and I, I don't know. I was wondering if you were familiar with one one for Israel because they're producing videos oh. that are excellent, just excellent. Yeah. yeah, they are so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's the other one, and they're connected with So Be It, like the So Be It guys, one for Israel guys. They kind of they've they've done interviews like the main guy Jeff, which is on So Be It. Um, he was a New York Jewish man who ended up becoming an Israeli citizen. And, and saved and he's just got an amazing testimony but he he's also um interviewed on the one for israel and yeah, they're great videos one for israel is outstanding yeah excellent excellent stuff and like i said the so be it goes out on the street in tel aviv or in jerusalem and they'll talk to people and there's there's a couple of uh there's one young guy and then the older guy jeff and uh, it's alicia and jeff they're amazing these guys are amazing. They love the Lord so much. And uh, Alicia was in the Israeli army. And he said, one of the things they all knew in the Israeli army was that you can, if there was a dangerous situation where a guy had a gun down here and nobody wanted to go down the hill to this guy with a gun and get shot, he said the Christians would always go because they weren't afraid to die. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. You know, that's a testimony itself. But the the Christian Israelis who were in the army were they were brave and they were willing to lay their lives down, you know? So yeah, it was really cool. But the street interviews are amazing. Check them out. Definitely check them out. You guys. Thanks, George. So Amy um, is our tech person. Thank you, Amy. Um, and she posted some of the prayer points that <clears throat> George had asked. So um, one is that we would pray for the YouTube ministry and then praying for the Jewish people to come to the father through Yeshua like the prodigal son and for the, and this I thought was very interesting and for the church to not be like the other brother who did not want to celebrate his lost brother returning to the father's land. So George, you want to just speak a moment on that? Yes, absolutely. So uh, it, the Lord put on my heart and I preached this at a Calvary chapel one time, but it was, so you see one brother who stays, he, he stays with the father. And it's like, later on, there's this other brother. And this other brother rejected the father. He said, give me all my inheritance. So he rejected him. Give it all to me now. And he leaves and he goes out throughout the world. And it was, it reminds me of when the Jewish people said, may his blood be upon us and our children. And then they said, we belong to Caesar, basically. You know, we, 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 you know, we belong to him. And then, so they ended up being dispersed all over the world and look at the Holocaust. It's like that prodigal son being in the pigsty, the, with the pigs in the worst, lowest place he could be. And he came to his senses. And what does he do? He comes back to his father's land. And when he comes back to his father's land, the father, even before he's fully back, starts preparing and blessing him already. And he was like, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. You know, just, just accept me here. And, and, and then there was this great celebration. And the other brother who, who never left him, right, comes back out of the field. And he was upset. And he was, he was kind of angry. He was really angry about it. He didn't want to go in and celebrate with the father. But the father says this to him. This is what hit me. He said, we must celebrate because your brother was dead. But now he's alive again. He was lost. He's found. He was dead. Now he's alive, right? So, so with Israel, if you look at Rome, Romans chapter 11 really carefully, it says that that same kind of thing. It says, what will their acceptance be with life from the dead? And Paul talks about how this, you know, don't be arrogant as a Gentile, but rejoice, you know, be, that you rejoice that you were grafted into the olive tree. But how much more would these natural olive branches be grafted back in again? So there's a celebration there. And so that prodigal son, 
uh, really makes me think of Israel and some of the churches, um, especially the ones that want to boycott, divest, and sanction against Israel, remind me of that other brother. Thank you, George. So we'll go ahead and go into praying um, for these prayer points and then um, spend a minute um, praying with the 21 days, glorifying the name of God. We'll spend a few minutes on that. And then George is going to lead us into communion. So if you don't have your elements. So um, if you'd like to pray into the prayer points, praying for the Jewish people to come to know the Father, please just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Well, I'll get us started. Lord, we just thank you for this time that we could come together. And we thank you for these ministries, Lord, as George has one and, and we know of others. And then there's many more, Lord. And it's clearly, clearly, Father, for your people to come to know you and to call you Abba, Messiah, Father God. We pray. We thank you for all those that are involved in these ministries. We thank you for the doors that are open. We thank you like George had shared, you know, being respectful of where they're at, but keeping the door open, Father. So we just thank you and we just pray, God, we just want more and more. And let the church not turn their back on um, on Israel, Lord. Let, let America and the other countries not turn our back on your people. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Kim, go ahead. All right. Well, thank you, George. This is awesome. Lord, we just bless. We bless George. We bless all those, his wife, his family, all those who are involved in this ministry and uh, just reaching your people. And Lord, you know, just even as I'm reflecting on Galatians and what it means when you said that there's, you know, there's no Jew, there's no Greek that we, or no Gentile, that we are one. And uh, yes, Lord, and um, we just pray a, a, that give your people the wisdom, the words to speak to reach our firstborn to reach the, the ones who the Messiah came through that family line and so that we truly can be one new man. We thank you that it is such an exciting time uh, right now for your people in all that you are doing because when we consider how, even just the miracles, that the, the, the testimonies that were being shared, how you are moving, how you are connecting people in a way that we haven't seen before, all these different prayer networks and ministries working together towards what you want to see manifested on earth. It is such an incredible time. And so we praise you tonight. We declare your sovereignty. We thank you for being our almighty God. And we bless the work that is being done uh, through George and others like him who are serving in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kim. Judah? Yes, listening to this song that reminded me, it brought tears in my eyes. Thank you so much because 20 years ago, the Lord really revealed himself to me and that brought me to Calvary Chapel here in Germany. So there is a deep connection. And I and what I felt there was really this, um, the, this, this first love. The Lord said to me, it's about never lose your first love. And it reminded me and brought tears. So thank you for that, sharing that. And um, and then um, um, even this with the prodigal son and what I see here, um, even as Germans also, but also uh, as all nations, um, when we connect with Israel, it's like um, the, it, it releases us in our calling as a nation and we bring this first fruit. And, and they will um, um, get to, um, we will reveal the true God of Israel to them through this connection. It's like a bee coming to a flower and it just brings something up and releases something. So we need Israel and Israel needs us. And so in your sharing, I really, um, I really, it's, it's so beautiful to see that it's um, in connecting with Israel, it brings forth your true calling. And it's like you're speaking the same language. So he, he gave you the, um, um, like the language they can understand even God or um, um, God can draw them back onto themselves. So I will, I bless you and the ministry or what the Lord is using you and and um, how he connects you and um, how he is revealing himself to your 
this love you have such a love and just such a joy you're bringing like you're pouring water into the people into israel and you um and you are not afraid or you're not uh, offended because you love is the strongest weapon so um i thank you so much that you um just take him on your hand and just uh, pour this love on your people and make yourself known and um, another verse I want to read is Ephesians 1, 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, Father, I thank you that you draw us back, that you root and ground us in yourself, Abba Father, through Christ Jesus for this huge revelation that will be unfold over all the nations, Lord, and then especially in Israel first, in your people, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you, Judah. Cassandra. Thank you. Amen, amen. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I kind of heard these pieces, but it's just awesome how you were saying to use the platforms. Uh, to, to reach out. So, my husband is for the rabbis to join the new religion of the Messiah. I know we just had a, a First Nation uh, Israel uh, summit this past week in Richmond, Virginia. So, that, that's been awesome. That's been something that was talked about. And, and even though, and they're also coming in October. So it's just a blessing like that. That that's is three twenty dollars, man. I've been I was I've been studying that one too. Been it says so far. We just thank you that we're learning to be that one new man, to be that body of God that you call us to be, and walk in the fullness of power and authority that you give each and every one of us. But together, we can do everything that you are already ordained. So Father, thank you for our brother George to be that light to, to bring people together in this in the scriptures that is through love and kindness and it's through love like I said so it's every piece works together that love forgiveness and being able to sit at the table and even have hard conversations because sometimes there are not the easiest conversations but they love so we just give you praise and glory and Yahshua's name amen and thank you amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cassandra. We have time for a few more um, prayers and then we'll um, go and um, pray the glorifying um, the names of God. So if anybody has another um, prayer they'd like to pray into it, just raise your hand. I'll pray. Okay, George, yeah. Oh, Lord, I thank you for these women who are just powerfully close to you i can sense it lord and i thank you for them and i pray that you would just pour you the high priest jesus with those 12 precious stones over your heart israel and you're pouring the oil that warm olive oil the anointing oil into us who are the seven lampstand we are the church lord and i pray you pour into each one of us overflowing so that we would be on fire for you lord and we would shine brightly on those precious stones that are over your heart and i just pray that you would anoint each one of us in that way in jesus name amen 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 thank you george hillary go ahead got it okay i just um been listening to some very inspirational um Talks from Jordan Peterson, who's saying, I'm no longer an atheist. And Heavenly Father, I just want to bless George and to give him the grace to speak to some of these highly intellectual, brilliant people who you are tapping, knocking on the door of their hearts. And uh, I can put it up onto the chat. This amazing talk is only about eight minutes or something. But Lord, I, you just had me listening to it over and over. And here's a man who doesn't want anything to do with religion. He wants Jesus. He wants to see people who are living the life of Jesus, who are doing the things that Jesus asked us to do. 
And I thank you, Father, for giving such grace to George when he's speaking to people who have been so disappointed by the church or the Jews with all of the um, consequences and the trauma of the Holocaust. And to be honest, George, I'm a Messianic believer and I know how hard it is. And yet, Father, I know so many of my brethren's hearts are so hungry, so desperate, and they don't know whether they really can trust you. And so, Father, I just thank you for such a grace on George in this time to hear the wind of your spirit, to know the words, Jesus, you want to be spoken to each person, which can unlock their heart and any unbelief or distrust or fear that they put their hope in you, Yeshua, and then be bitterly disappointed like so many other things. And I just thank you for this testimony of Jordan Peterson, that really he watched his wife, who wasn't even going to a church, but she was gathering with others who were believers, and she was becoming more and more deeply committed. And he saw through the evidence of her life. And I thank you, Father, for all of us. This is a wake-up call. We're not just sitting in church talking about things we think, but we're actually actively obeying you and reaching out and bringing others to Jesus because that's what we're meant to be doing. And give us that grace, that passion, I pray. And to how to make disciples, how to make disciples of Jesus. So people are constantly looking back into the scriptures and discovering you for themselves. I pray for this in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Hillary. So in transitioning to um, 21 days, glorifying the names of God through the narrow strait started July 6th through um, July 27th. Um, so I'm just going to read part of what Sue posted. As wars and rumors of wars rise in the nations, we are setting aside this time of historic difficulties for Israel to worship him over the nations. Jehoshaphat understood this when Israel's enemies came against them. The odds were overwhelmingly against Israel, but God had a better plan. As they focused on worship to praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever, God sent ambushes and the enemy was defeated. And that's from 2 Chronicles 20, 20. So in the information that George shared, provided tonight it seemed to me that the name would be um, Yeshua and in Matthew 1 um, verse 21 she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name of Jesus because he will save his people from their sin and um, Luke chapter 2 again verse 21 on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise the child he was named jesus the name the angel had given to him before he was conceived so again you know just god's promise lord you know the details and we just thank you father we pray for your mercy we thank you for this time we've had we praise you we glorify your name Yeshua, Yeshua saves the people from their sins Jehovah Rapha, healer of us all. You are all we need. You are wonderful. You are counselor, wonderful. You're enough. You see us, you know each need. You're aware of everything. You know each hair, each head. You make a way where there seems to be no way. You know each Hebrew. You know each soul. You're the God who sees. Thank you, Lynn. I think Eileen might have signed back out to try to re-sign back in because sometimes that helps. I'll go ahead and George, pray. Yeah, you're going to go ahead and pray, Kim? Okay. Yeah. 
yeah. Oh, Lord, Yeshua, we can, and that's a beautiful song, Lynn, so thank you for sharing that. It's gorgeous. And it had such depth and such meaning. So Father, it, uh, Yeshua, we consider everything that is in the name of Yeshua and how a, you brought salvation um, to each and every one of us. You saved us in a way, in every way a person can be saved, body, soul, and spirit. There's so much to that. There's so much depth to your love, to your covenant, and to your desire to reach across time and space throughout all of eternity to bring your people in restoration to you, to be restored in our relationship back to our Heavenly Father. And we are so grateful for that. So we uphold the name of Yeshua. That is the only name in which we can have. We embrace you and we embrace as Yeshua as our Lord and Savior. Then we are truly alive and we have the fullness of life and all that is available to us. And we're grateful. We bless you. Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So if you have your elements, George is going to lead us in communion. Okay. Yes. Everybody ready? Okay. So in, in Mark, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 22, Jesus said in verse 17, and when he had taken, uh, so that when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom comes. And when he had taken some bread, so so let's take the cup together. Uh, not yet, I'm sorry. Let's take the bread, the bread first. And then he said in verse 19, he says, and when he, he had taken some of the bread and given thanks and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the, the bread. And then it says, and in that same way, he took the cup after he had eaten, saying, this is the cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant of my blood. Let's take and drink and remember the blood that, that Jesus shed for each one of us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice and the breaking of your body, the shedding of your blood, that you did that for us out of your great and powerful love. And I pray that that touches each one of us in a special way tonight in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, George. And yes, uh, Cassandra, aren't you going to just say it? Oh, what she always says is, and the blood still works. Amen. So we're say that. Elizabeth's power. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> And um, I just want to say blessings over each and every one of you, whether you're coming to the end of your evening or the beginning of your day or the um, middle of your day. It just blessing each step and each breath as you just shout out. God, don't forget to put on the full armor as you suit up to show up to shout out. And let's do what we always do on Global Watch. And also, don't we think that I need to connect uh, George with some of our uh, friends in Israel, see if he can't connect with them once he gets over there. George, it's an amazing community of people over there. I know they'd love to see you. Um, okay, so let's unmute and everybody say good night. Good night, good night, good night everybody. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Blessings to all. Thank you. Blessings. Bye. Shalom. Shalom. Amy, thank you. Shalom.